What's going on all you sexy animals? Welcome back to another Supercross 5 video. This is my tips and tricks guide tutorial. For some reason, if you actually enjoy this piece of shit game and you want to get better at it, well, I got some pointers that should help you out. Also, the game audio will be kind of low because there is a bug in the free roam area on the tracks. It sounds like a bunch of birds are chirping because the game thinks you're riding on the compound when you're actually not. So again, that is why the audio is super low in this video. So I hope you enjoy. So let's talk about camera settings. Think of this as a field of view option for the game. If you're playing Call of Duty, you wanna be running in the highest field of view possible, or at least near the top. It kinda of is the same thing with the Supercross 5 as well. As you can see, the more zoomed in the camera is, you really cannot see where you're going. It's hard to see where the next turn is, and if you run in this camera, you're kinda of crazy. Out of the two third person cameras that you can choose from, I recommend going with the one that's a bit lower because it doesn't move around as much. I also would recommend zooming the camera all the way out so that you can see as much of the track as you possibly can. It is basically a field of view option and it gives you a pretty big advantage because you can see where the next corner is and exactly where you want to put the bike. This one can come down to personal preference but I strongly recommend zooming your camera all the way out and the more lower third person camera. Do not run in first person if you're trying to run competitive lap times because you just simply cannot tell where the bike is going and you can't see your back tire. Some people may like it but I would not run first person ever. I don't care how many tips and tricks videos I make, manual shifting will be in every single one until everybody that plays these games is running manual transmission. Because it is probably the most important thing in Supercross 5 and all of these other milestone motocross video games. It is super important. Everybody should be running manual transmission. It is not hard at all to get used to it. It shouldn't take much longer than a few races to get used to manual transmission. I play on the Xbox controller and me personally. When I shift up, I press the B button. When I shift down, I press the X button. I recommend messing around with different button configurations. Whichever one feels the best to you, that's what you should go with. The reason why automatic transmission is so dooky is because it usually has you in the wrong gear and corners, and especially the whoop sections. Coming into corners, you will often be in too high of a gear or too low of a gear. And in the whoop sections, it usually has you in much lower of a gear than you should be in, and you really notice this on tracks like Atlanta, or really any track that has a long whoop section. Tracks that have shorter whoop sections don't matter as much with automatic transmission because you will only lose a few kilometers here and there, but the longer the whoop section, the more important that manual transmission is. So this next section will be everybody's favorite. Come on, it's the exploits. There's a few of them to go over, so let's just do it. So the first exploit in the game I'm going over is the whip glitch. It's not the same as the whip glitch in MX Unleashed or Reflex, but it's kind of there. It doesn't necessarily shoot you a ton further in this game. It mainly keeps you really low and also at the same time it does shoot you far. It can be useful for getting over those big jumps. So how you execute this is by doing a preload and pulling back on both of the sticks as you go off of the jump. And then you kind of whip your bike in a certain direction so that your rider and bike stay super low to the ground and you're not shooting to the moon. It's a little hard to describe, but you can see the way I am moving my rider around in the air and it definitely keeps him a lot lower than if you were to just preload. The next exploit is whipping in corners. Yeah, you can whip in the corners in this game and it makes you go quite a bit faster. This was kind of the same case as in Supercross 4, and again it is in Supercross 5. The fact that this exploit is in this game proves that they need to completely rework the whipping and scrubbing mechanics slash system. They just have to free the whip because you should not be able to throw a goddamn whip in a corner and go faster. But anyways, this can be very tricky though because it's hard to get right. You can easily mess up, loop out, go down. So you have to be careful with what you're doing. So in left turns, pull your sticks apart. In right turns, push your sticks together. You can either give them a quick flick or you can gradually hold it as if you're turning in the opposite direction. You just have to play with it a little bit and get the feeling down for it. I wouldn't really recommend doing this a bunch in races unless you're super comfortable with it. But for quick lap times, this is definitely a must. So yeah, if you wanna cheese the game like crazy, this is one of the best ways to do it. The next exploit is the wheelie glitch. Pretty iconic in milestones, supercross games, motocross games. And once again, it is in supercross five, but however, it is definitely not as overpowering or as insane as it was in the past games, especially in supercross four. The front end feels a tiny bit heavier in supercross five. I think they kinda 
try to make it a bit harder to pull a wheelie as quick as possible. Also, the way the tracks are designed, it is not quite as easy to pull off a wheelie right away and slingshot your bike forward. But you can still definitely pull it off in Supercross 5, certain tracks, certain areas, or if you get this exploit down, you can definitely still do the wheelie glitch. The way you do this exploit is pull back on both your sticks so your guy does a wheelie, either as you're coming up to a face of a jump or in midair as you're coming back down to land. And the second you're about to take off of a jump, you push both your sticks forward and it kind of slingshots your bike over the face of the jump and boosts you forward. Essentially, it is another version of a scrub, but it is an unrealistic version of it. It looks pretty goofy, but hey, it's in the game. It can make you go quicker. So if you didn't know about it, now you do the wheelie glitch. The next exploit is the scrub glitch. You can kind of combine this with the wheelie glitch and make it its own little baby, I guess you could say. Myself, I like to do this over finish lines or triples, big doubles, etc. You don't really need to do it over small little jumps. So the way to execute this is by basically doing a half scrub is the best way I can describe it as. So as you're coming up to the face of a jump to do a scrub, you either push your sticks in or out and you go about halfway up and slightly let them go and push them forward. When you push forward, it keeps your rider really low. And that brings me to my next tip. So in order to stay low on basically every single jump in this game, you just push forward with your right stick and your left stick at the same time. And sometimes you just push forward and lean at the same time and it keeps you much lower to the ground than if you were to just pull back on your sticks or do nothing with them. It may not gain you tons of time in a section, but over the course of a lap, you will be gaining a lot of time and over the course of a race, even more time. I do it over pretty much every jump because it just saves you time and it's super easy to do. The preload. I still think plenty of people don't know the preload exists in Milestones games. It's not as drastic as it was in MX Unleashed where you just push up and down and you shoot 300 feet further. That's not the case in this game. The way you do it in Supercross 5 is you just pull back on both your sticks and you let go. It'll shoot you much further and much higher. But like I said earlier, you want to combine the preload and the whip glitch and sometimes the scrub glitch and that will keep you much lower than if you were to just do a simple preload. So again, pull back on both your sticks as you're going off the face of a jump and throw a half scrub in there. Push forward on both your sticks as quick as you can because that will keep you a lot lower. So I hope you enjoyed the video. That is my tips and tricks in Supercross 5. Let me know if any of these did help you out or if they suck. And if you have anything that I might have missed, any pointers, comment them down below, help everybody out. Yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. You may not see very many more Supercross 5 uploads because I just simply don't enjoy playing the game and uh, I don't want to play it. So I hope you enjoyed and take care.